Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to East Central Missouri and the world, and welcome to the James Strong Show podcast, podcast number 187. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for making us a part of your day. I appreciate it. This podcast was recorded on the evening of Thursday, September 17th, from the James Strong Show studio in western St. Charles County. Some months ago, I had a gentleman on the podcast Jerome Konigsfeld, and he was a world traveler, uh, and he had a huge uh, a- a- adventure in uh, in Iran, and he went from Iran, and he was on his way into Afghanistan, and I thought, you know, let's take it from there, so we're going to go ahead and go with part two of the adventure of Jerome Konigsfeld, world traveler. Jerome, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm great. Welcome to the podcast again. We got a lot of good results from the podcast. A lot of people loved your adventures. I mean, uh, here people, uh, I I tout myself as somewhat of a world traveler, uh, but the places that I've been can't hold a candle to the places that you've been. Correct? Well, (laughs) I've I've been to a few places. You've been to more than a few places. And uh, and, and for those who who missed the podcast, the first podcast. Let's set the table. Uh, these adventures you went on were years ago, correct? Yeah, from uh, 1968 to 1973. And was right after you got out of the military, correct? Short, shortly after I got out of the military. And so for five years, you basically wandered the world, picking up odd jobs, merchant marine jobs, uh, doing what well, you could. Yeah, mo- not mo- not working very much. I had to put my money in the bank. I had it in mine in my mother's name, and and whenever I got to a country where it was uh, a, the currency was good and it was safe, then I'd have her send me m- money and I carried American Express travelers checks. That's how almo- almost everybody did back then. I remember and, the uh, I remember the old American Express travelers checks. Yeah, and, and that's how we got our mail, too, through American Express. As long as you had traveler's checks, you, you could get mail through them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and many of the places that you've traveled to, to me, the most interesting places, I mean, the, the world is a wonderful place. I mean, there's the United States and Canada and Mexico and and England and France and Germany, but you went to the far reaches of the world. Well, I did. I did all of Europe too. But sure. Yeah. Then uh, it was because I got that uh, job, where job driving cars, you know, from Munich, Germany to Tehran, Iran, is what got me there. And then pulled out my trusty map and my trusty world map, and I looked on the map and I go, "Oh, there's India." I mean, and so I said I'd heard about India and didn't know much about no Afghanistan or Pakistan, but so I headed out. So where we left you last time. Uh, you were at the, I want to say the, uh, the, was it the Iranian Afghan border? Yes. And you were headed and you were headed East. That's correct. Well, let's take it from there then. All right. Well, right after we crossed the border. Okay. Now who, who, for those who didn't, uh, listen last time, who is we? Well, I I was with a, a young woman that I traveled with a lot of the time. We traveled on and off. She didn't want to do certain things, and and so we would separate, and we'd go our own way, and then we'd meet up again. But for this part, we were together through here. And this was uh, and this was platonic, romantic. What was this woman? Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, it was it was a girlfriend. Okay, uh, she was from San Francisco, uh, where I had been before we started out. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, we we crossed into. Uh, Afghanistan, and as soon as you cross the border, there were Afghan men there with their hand out, wanting to know if you wanted to buy shit, which was the international word for hashish. Okay, <laughs> a ball of hashish in their hand, and I mean, right out in the open. That was the first time we'd ever seen that. And uh, anyway, we get through, you know, with our doing our passport and everything, and. About the time we was ready to leave and and, and find a, a bus, which we traveled all the way through there from, by bus now, here comes this black car that pulls up to the to this little wooden hut that, that the 
uh, we did our passports and stuff in where they checked your passport. And these men, I think there was three of them, if I remember right, dark suits, ties, black, shiny shoes, sunglasses on, completely weird, out of place, totally. And I goes, my God, what? who are them people? And that was the first time I'd ever heard of Interpol. Okay, that's the, the International Police. Yeah, International Police Organization. And the reason they they go there and check them little uh, pe- where people pass through, they catch drug smugglers. Okay. They, they see a, a pattern, you know, of a certain person or, or people, and then they, they start watching them. Well, anyway, that, that happened there. Then we, we, so we get our bus and we head on into a hurrah. But before you get to Herat, uh, well, no, excuse me, I'm getting off here. Uh, we, we got to Herat and spent some time around there. It's really dirty and backward. And, and that, that's, an, that's, an, that's an Afghan town, correct? That's, a, that's the first Afghan town, the first regular town. Okay. And, and so we sped, spend a day or two there. And then we got a bus from Herat to Kabul. And because it was the, uh, the fall time, they go through the center. Otherwise, you have to go either to the south, which is Kandahar, or to the north, Mazi Sharif. But we went right through the center because a lot of the roads are the riverbeds that they that they traveled in. I'm, I'm sure they're changed now. But, you, uh, you know, you might be on a regular road, and then you just drive down into a riverbed because there was no water there because it was fall. Mm-hmm. And, and you just they drive through the riverbed until they get to another road and come on out and and anyhow we made it to Kabul and uh, in Kabul uh, it was a busy dirty town the rivers through the city was barely running and filthy I mean it was terrible and I got sick I ate some goat meat and got terribly sick and ended up with uh, three months of dysentery three months. Three months. I couldn't get it. I went to the American consulate in in Kabul, and they gave you either a tincture of morphine or tincture of uh, opium to try to to, to to cure it, and that didn't work. So uh, when days were good, we did things and 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 started on our way out of Kabul to uh, Pakistan, and uh, got to the Pakistani border. And crossed over into Pakistan, and right after you cross over, the Khyber Pass comes into play. The, I don't, I'm sure you've heard of it. Oh yeah, the world famous Khyber Pass. Wow, you couldn't believe all the men and even a lot of the little kids. They all carrying shotguns on their shoulders. At, a lot of them double barrel shotguns, and and some of the men have pistols and shotguns. And I mean everybody's carrying them and you ought to see the cliffs that they live in in the in the Khyber Pass there solid rock walls they built steps and stuff up to it and then they cut right into the solid rock about the size of a door and they're living in there that's their home when other people that carried the guns was that for protection from bandits they they say it was the biggest uh uh lost my mind here uh for uh golly i can't even think of the word i'm trying to say now uh, jesus well you uh <laughs> golly oh no we we're, were talking about the people that were uh everybody carrying guns pistols rifles double barrel shotguns going through the kyber pass and and the people living in the uh holes in the holes in the uh in the in the walls yeah they they they, uh i can't even think of the word i'm trying to say that they uh (laughs) boy my mind has went blank well that's Uh, well well, that's okay they they, uh, uh don't necessarily steal stuff but they they're they're uh it's the biggest uh uh not trading, but uh, I can't think of the word. Bartering, that, maybe? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, where you guys, uh, you 
steals, sneak stuff through and, and smuggling. Smuggler. Okay, yeah, there we go. go. Golly, <laughs> it, it, it's the biggest smuggling ring in the world. They that one time. I don't know if it still is or not. Okay. And and anyway, that's what the deal is there. Why they're all carrying guns and everything? Because they were all smugglers, and there's no honor amongst thieves. Right. And the the road through there, it's in, I mean, it's windy, real windy. And they had these cement blocks like you see along the highway to protect the workers, you know, where they can move them around. Yes. They had them where you kind of zigzag down the road. They'd have one on one side, one on the other, where you couldn't just speed through. You had to, and then they could move them and block the road completely if they wanted to at any time. You know, they had people that would do that. And it, it was just, it was crazy to see what, what that was like. So anyhow, we uh, got into Peshawa and uh, again, uh, uh, just uh, very dusty, dirty, not much of anything there and uh, spent some time there. And then on to uh, uh, Ralpindi, which is kind of in the middle between Peshawa and Lahore is, is uh, on the Indian border now. So we took our time and moved all the way through Pakistan to Lahore. Well, let's let's and, let's, uh, let's back up for just a moment because <clears throat> you went through through Afghanistan, a Muslim country, through Pakistan, uh, and at that time, I guess they called it uh, West Pakistan. Correct? Yes, that was West Pakistan, <clears throat> and mm-hmm. East Pakistan was on the other side of India. Uh, Correct, which is called Bangladesh now, but both of those, but both of those, have always been Muslim countries, Muslim areas. What did they think about you traveling with a woman who wasn't your wife? Did they say anything about that? No, things were things were much better back then than they are now. People were were they more tolerant? Yeah, they just kind of didn't didn't pay no attention to it or as much attention to it as they do now. And, and uh, you know, like I told you, when she was driving that car through a, a, a Turkey and Iran, they them truck drivers would try to run her off the road, just drive at her and, right. you know, do crazy stuff like that. But we were just traveling and you travel on a you travel by bus. In the cities, they didn't like in Kabul or, or uh, Herat. Even they, nobody bothered you. It was the it was the hippie route through there during the sixties. Okay, so they seen all kinds of crazies, you know, uh, uh, through there, and uh, so they didn't they didn't really bother you at that time, and uh, uh, so like I said, traveled through uh, uh, Pakistan. And uh, Lahore was a little more interesting. Uh, there were some nice places in Pakistan, but as a general rule, not as not too much of anything. It was pretty dark and, I mean, dirty and uh, uh, not not much of anything growing. You know, of course, again, it was fall, and uh, so it was it was different. But we took well, no, no, buses no, no, through. Now, hold on, just a minute. Let me, let me ask a question here. Uh, you mentioned all the people. You mentioned the smugglers, which is against the law. But uh, was there was there much formal government in that part of the world at that time? Who the, whoever was control they uh, what did they call them uh, uh, like families like or whatever they they control areas and that's that's like the like law. warlords almost yes and that and that's the law okay Wh- whatever whatever their deal is you know. And uh, uh, th- things are completely different than they were over here. Uh, but they, like I said, they never bothered us, really. Some people got bothered. Some people got hassled. Uh, uh, women, uh, th- there were some women that were traveling alone. There was some women, two at a time. Uh, uh, and they made it through okay. And some got hassled. But it was kind of what they were wearing and what they were doing, too. Sure. If you were if you were prudent with what you did, you were okay. Basically, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Unless you got hooked up with an idiot or someone come along. Uh, uh, on the on the train, then after we crossed the border into India, we met a a doctor, American doctor from L.A. He was a child doctor. He had polio and both of his legs were bad, and he used two canes to walk with. 
his wife had come through there during her after she graduated. 